Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alayhi wa sahbihi wa sallam amma ba'da habatifillah from some of the maqasid of siyam or the intent or intention behind fasting of what we should try to achieve, what we should try to attain, uh, what we should try to benefit from this blessed month. Uh, from some of the muqasid of siyam, first and foremost is taqwa Allah is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned fi kitab al-kareem, kutiba alaykum siyam kama kutiba ala ladina min qablikum la'allukum, uh, as-siyam kama kutiba ala ladina min qablikum la'allukum tattakun, that verily we have prescribed for you fasting, similar to the way we prescribe for those who came before you in order that you would achieve taqwa. So we know that this is the sunnah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that it is the sunnah of the messengers alayhim afdal salatu was salam uh, to fast to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, meaning that this sunnah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't change. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has legislated this for the other earlier nations. And the maqsad or the intent behind this, as Allah Azza wa Jal mentions, تتكون, is that you attain taqwa Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That you adhere to the commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that you avoid his prohibitions. And when we look at uh, how this exercise is taking place, bi'idnillah ta'ala, that while we're fasting, we are restraining ourselves. We're trying a little bit more not to look at the muharramat. And we're trying a little bit more. We're making a little bit more effort to avoid listening to the muharramat, those things which are prohibited for us. And likewise, we are also striving our best and prohibiting ourselves from eating and drinking. And we're striving and exercising our ability to refrain from speaking ill words. So this is all a part of taqwa. This is all a part of actualizing taqwa, practicing taqwa, and implementing taqwa Allah in our lives. لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ Another benefit uh, of uh, fasting is that some of the intent behind fasting is الضبط النفس عن شهوات. It is to not just restrain oneself from one's desires, but to, to exercise and implement and can precisely uh, control one's desires. So by exercising fasting, by fasting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this excellent act of ibadah, that we are exercising our, our nafs, ourselves, and our desires. We're controlling our desires. We're trying to harness those things which are beloved to us. Our uh, quest to fill our stomachs. You know, our desires to fill our stomachs. Our desires to drink and eat. Our desires, our sexual desires, akramakum Allah as well. Your passions, all of these are part of your shahwat. And they are all in need of exercising and fasting. One of the intents uh, behind fasting is that we, we uh, refrain and we control our shahwat. Another intent behind fasting is that fasting is a, it's a type of tarbiya. Tarbiyah ala akhlaq wa adab. That fasting is also a way for us to educate ourselves and implement and perfect good manners. And we know the hadith of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam 
where he sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam said that ma min shay athqalu fi mizan al mu'min yawm al qiyama min husn al khulq wa inna allah yubghidhu al fahsh al badi there isn't a thing that weighs heavier on the scale of the believers and we believe in the scales of good deeds that our deeds will be weighed on the day of judgment uh, your good and your bad to see which overtakes which and to determine your destination wa iyad billah wa iyakum min an nar and so ma min shay'in athqalu fi mizan al mu'min there isn't a thing that weighs heavier on the scale of the believer than good manners and verily allah hates wicked wickedness and sinful speech ahabat fillah this is also one of the things that fasting helps you to exercise within yourselves exercise good akhlaq remind yourself that you're fasting before you want to hit that one before you want to curse that one the next time you wish to backbite that one exercise uh your your fasting exercise the taqwa exercise the tarbiya of your manners exercise those good morals and manners that allah azza wa jalla wants from us another benefit of, uh, of fasting ahabat fillah as that fasting is a jannah fasting is a shield it's a shield to protect you from the nar and protect you from the punishment of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to protect you from wicked conduct That's what fasting is. So we have to strive our best to fast for the sake of Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala and be conscious. And I love talking about these things because it reminds me first before it reminds you. It reminds me first that when I was getting tired in the hot sun, today I felt the hunger and I felt the thirst and I felt the shortcomings and the want to just, you know, not necessarily behave good with this one. So we need these man we need these reminders. We need the reminders to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we need the reminders about the tarbiya of what we're trying to attain. Kutiba alaykum siyam kama kutiba alladhina kutiba ala alladhina min qablikum la'allakum tattaqun. It's in order that you 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 uh gain taqwa. Remember, it's about taqwa Allah azza wa jalla and we need this reminder as the as the month is going. We're getting closer to the last 10 days of Ramadan. We've reached the halfway point. What did you attain so far? And you need a refresher to remember why you're continuing and what you want to attain from this holy month, this holy this beautiful month of of Ramadan. Another benefit of uh fasting a habit of Allah is that it it also encourages a person to empathize and to sympathize with those who have less than you that you should remember your brothers and sisters and those even who are not believers in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who are suffering who are struck who are suffering who are struggling who don't have anything who are homeless who live under plastic i've seen so many people who live under plastics in the west but especially in in other places like ethiopia cold words cold the only thing they have is their cot that they chew which is a type of drug allah him istan and their the plastic that's covering them protecting them from rain and sometimes very harsh wind and i just think subhanallah he's sleeping he or she is sleeping there with her children under that with the stray dogs and the giant rats and in some places even where the hyenas are so we have to empathize with the people and remember the many 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 blessings we get cuz we forget we take it for granted that we have so much and so i ask that allah azza wa jal the almighty blesses us with good protects us from evil and blesses us to finish this this month of Ramadan blesses us with the barakah of the shahar mubarak wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam